Hello and welcome to this exclusive Apex interview with AirFi, a true pioneer of portable IFE solutions and maker of the AirFi box, which is in use by more airlines and on more aircraft than anywhere else in the world. Uh, joining us today from AirFi is Job Heimerichs and Martin Moray, who are the co-founders of AirFi. Welcome, guys. Hi, Marianne. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. You okay? Thank you for having us, Marianne. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm really excited to chat with you a little bit about what's going on with AirFi. Um, so what it seems from what we've what we've heard in the news that AirFi has been keeping quite a bit of momentum going despite you know the current crisis that our industry is in. So can you elaborate on what's been going on? Yeah, sure. Well, the momentum actually started all the way back in 2011 when, when we started and it has been a, a very much of a race ever since. Um, but uh, yeah, we're very happy with the new projects that um, that despite the entire situation we're in in the industry, we are we were able to launch, and um, and that's something that we're very proud of at this moment in time. Adding to what Job just said, um, we're very busy with uh, uh, the implementation of Scoot Hub uh, here in Asia, um, uh, quite a unique project uh, um, uh, for the region, and uh, of course we're very thrilled that. Uh, that Scoot decided to um, come out of this uh, uh, crisis with a, with a very new offering. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about the nature of that deployment? How many aircraft are we looking at, types of routes, um, and then what makes the Scoot Hub product itself so special? So the project is quite special. Uh, Scoot is a part of uh, Singapore Airlines. They have 23 A320s and, and uh, 20 Boeing 787s, of course. At this moment, they're not yet uh, flying all uh, again because of the, the closure of the borders. Um, but COVID has forced them into taking off the aircraft, uh, the in-flight magazines and the menus uh, for people. So there's no uh, way to actually sell products duty-free uh, food and beverage anymore. Um, and that together with a saving on the environment and saving on, uh, on, uh, on weight, um, it was a decision for Scoot Management actually to uh, go with uh, uh, with a wireless uh, wireless product. Um, the other special thing is not only our very fast deployment time, uh, only a couple of months, uh, but it's also a complete integration with a third-party e-commerce provider, Chris Shop, also part of Singapore Airlines, uh, destination information uh, provider uh, with uh, local uh, attraction bookings, uh, payment gateways um, and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, our partner uh, sets uh, with food and beverage integration. Um, and uh, although AirFi has already been uh, in the space of self-service ordering since 2015, uh, where one of our customers uh, actually used it for their night flight uh, um, sales, um, Scoot has now completely reversed that model to there's only going to be self-service ordering. So passengers using their own device will be able to order products uh, and uh, the, the trolley will not come into the aisle anymore um, uh, except for maybe uh, handing out some, uh, some hot meals. So Marianne, the, um, the point is, is that our company always has been on the crossroads between catering and in-flight entertainment. And uh, in-flight entertainment obviously is the most visible part of what we do, but in essence, also with our MPOS product, we have been working on this crossroad between ancillary sales and passenger experience pretty much since our entire company life. And because of that expertise we have, um, we are also able to really quickly with these new conditions, serve our customers and our clients to, to bring these kind of solutions uh, to the market, and that really makes our company uh, stand out from 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 other players that originated from IV. And I'm not saying they are doing a bad job, but this is a completely different approach towards uh, customer experience than solely from an IV standpoint. Okay, yeah, we have certainly have seen an acceleration of the trend of IV and uh, catering and logistics companies trying to integrate their systems. So it's good to hear that you guys have always sort of been thinking along this line. <laughs> Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, other companies and airlines now focusing on the trend of touchless cabin operations. So not just from a passenger perspective, but from the entire uh, operational cabin environment. So why is your expertise in this area um, different or unique to what, what your competitors are doing right now? Well, one of the things that we truly believe in is that we want to be the crew friend. 
and we have done this uh, since the, again since the day that we we originated that we took the the crew very much as the as the centerpiece of everything we do we need to make it easier for them we need to make sure that they are happy with the system because we follow the rule that at 10,000 feet the the person that really is ruling the world is the cr member of the crew and by doing so you know we always wanted to have a situation where the sale would always go on, where the crew would not be bothered by any management of our system, whether this would be activating a 3G channel when landing or activating or deactivating the systems, uh, swapping batteries, all that kind of stuff just needs to be completely automated. And this is also the reason why we uh, last year introduced the face product, fully autonomous, semi-embedded, where we really wanted to really take the burden away from the crew for managing the system and really have them depend on the system without any any uh, any manual intervention whatsoever and that's what we stand for is that really we want to have to have the crew empowered to do their job um, actually take away some of their administrative burdens and all that kind of stuff so that they also then have more time to spend on uh, serving the passengers in general. Okay, um, and when you talk about the phase product, the semi-embedded um, product, just how much, how hands-on is that product? Uh, and I wonder how popular it's been since you launched it. How hands-on is it? Basically, it's a, a semi-embedded solution, which, which still resides in the cabin overhead, but the installation time is way uh, shorter. So you don't need to do it actually during a sea check, but, uh, but you can do this in an overnight uh, installation. Um, and and draw power from uh, from the aircraft so that the the logistics of the box to uh, go down for recharging is uh, is not necessary anymore and there is all kinds of reasons uh, for some airlines to uh, to choose for a semi embedded version versus uh, a portable version it has to do with how agile uh, is the, is is the fleet or dynamic is the fleet um, how are the are the aircraft owned or are they leased uh, so there's a uh, for any sort of air, uh, airline with a with a hybrid fleet, there's a reason to uh, to do this. And still, since Airfy, of course, uh, has a, um, a fully autonomous uh, switching on and switching off of radios, but also over the air updates of basically everything what is running on our system, from firmware to payments to uh, applications and content updates. Um, it's a fully automated process. Um, which makes uh, uh, this semi-embedded product very uh, cheap for the airlines because nobody has to touch the aircraft anymore to do uh, the uh, uh, the updates. Perfect. Okay, uh, we are looking at, at a, a fairly long recovery in aviation. People are saying two up to three years. How is AirFi planning to help airlines through this this process? So, um, so what we will see uh, in different countries, different regions, is a different speed of uh, of reinstating the the full fleet of those uh, of those airlines. Um, and Air Airfy is helping the airlines, of course, uh, by by offering a solution which is very cost effective. Uh, we heard uh, uh, in a in a roundtable a CEO of a. Uh, of an airline uh, say that in the grand schema of things the investment for the airfry solution is uh, is not that uh, not that big it's not buying a new aircraft of course um, um, and of course we're also very agile in in supporting them while their fleet is being uh, made operational uh, and and very fast if they can fly to new destinations so so we are offering our solutions in the pricing model um, and in a uh, and with lead times that are um, uh, very favorable for uh, for the airlines and the current dynamic routes that they uh, that they need to fly, uh, and we're not so we're not talking about lead times of uh, of six months or a year before you can actually deploy such a system, but we we measure this in weeks. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> to add on that, you know, um, obviously we can reduce cost and weight and and these kind of things but we really want to keep on innovating we really want to be and remain to be the um, uh, the innovation leader in the in the portable space but also in the the, the cabin and the experience and the ancillary sales space so um, you know we invented the adsb uh, solution for the the moving map 
um, you know, the in-seat ordering, and there are many other innovations, uh, you know, coming to the industry that we are working on together with our current clients to really constantly uh, come up with low-cost, smart innovations that really, you know, improve the customer experience and improve the capabilities to, to conduct more sales and to conduct more ancillary sales. And so these kind of things are our are, are constant focus on, on what we do because we believe that we can seriously contribute to the bottom line of, of an airline's uh, financial results by, by creating more revenue on the one hand side, but also uh, creating opportunities for crew and, and cost efficiencies, operational efficiencies, and everything we do is pretty much geared to doing just that. That all sounds really positive, guys. It sounds like you're really well positioned uh, to continue to take a leadership role in uh, the portable IFE segment as we go forward and, and head into a stage of recovery in the industry. Um, this week, we're gearing up for the FTE Apex Virtual Expo. You guys are taking part in the expo. Can we expect anything special from Air 5? Uh, of course, we are um, uh, going much in depth uh, uh, into the launch of Scoot Hub. Uh, Scoot already announced it last week um, uh, with a, a big media event, um, but we're able to uh, uh, to go more in depth. And actually, we interviewed the key players um, for uh, especially for the show uh, on uh, on how their game plan is to come to uh, uh, recovery uh, using this uh, this integrated approach for uh, uh, generating onboard revenue. Well, Marian, we're manning our booth at the Apex Trade Show 24-7 with our representatives from pretty much every part of the world. We're here there to, to have like a true interaction with them over video. Uh, we're able to tell people more about what we've done with EasyJet, with Scoot, what we talked about today, as well as with Eastern, with our face product. So we're very happy uh, that we're there and we're very much hoping that people are dropping by. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much, guys. That's all the time we've got for this interview. Um, if I hope that everybody comes and visits you at the show and takes advantage of these video um, networking opportunities. But if they want to look for you online, where can they find you? Well, they can always go to www.airfire.aero and um, uh, where they can pretty much read everything we do over there or, you know, come in direct contact with us. 